Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the bypass function of a metering device on a heat pump. So a heat pump reverses the directional flow of the refrigerant due to the reversing valve in the outdoor unit. So that reversing valve has four tubes on it and it connects two different tubes in pairs. I'm going to be explaining the individual bypass feature in each of these metering devices, but first I want to explain where they're located at in the system. On a single speed or two speed heat pump, we're going to have a metering device mounted at the indoor coil. And oftentimes it's the thermostatic expansion valve, which is also referred to as the TEV or TXV. And in air conditioning mode, that metering device is going to be active and the coil is going to act as the evaporator and the refrigerant is going to be absorbing heat from the indoor air. In heating mode, that TXV is going to be inactive and the coil is going to be the condenser coil where the refrigerant rejects heat to the inside air. On a heat pump, we typically find a piston as the metering device at the outdoor unit. Now, that could be found either prior to or right after the service valve for the liquid line. And in this case, you see it's right at the right in front of the liquid line service valve. And that right there is going to be active in heating mode. And that outdoor coil is going to be the evaporator where the refrigerant absorbs heat from the outside air during heating mode. In air conditioning mode, that piston on the inside is going to be inactive, and that coil is going to be the condenser coil where the refrigerant rejects heat to the outside air. Here we have a piston chamber right here, and here's our piston chamber nut and our O-ring where it seals up at. And this piston right here is, right now when it's shoved this way, right in here, it's active. And so the only path for the refrigerant to go through is through the hole in the center. So as you can see, there's also an O-ring on this one. Other pistons don't have an O-ring, but it just seals, basically, you just have the brass to the brass. And you see where the refrigerant would enter into the distributor tubes at to go to the coil. And when it's inactive, you would have it like this, and it would go back to here. Now you see that there's a pathway surrounding the outside of the piston, and it can also, the refrigerant can go through the center and around the piston. So this is the bypass function for the piston. It just slides back and forth, just like this depending on the direction of the refrigerant. Here we have an early design of a thermostatic expansion valve bypass feature. And you have high pressure liquid entering in here and then it comes down through the tube and then pushes up on that plate and it seals the bottom. On the bottom of this TXV you have your, your low pressure refrigerant and then you have your high pressure refrigerant coming this way. And so it's actually uh, holding that plate in place. So then you have also your high pressure refrigerant changes the low pressure and then exits out of the thermostatic expansion valve and heads to the evaporator. In the bypass feature, it comes this way from the indoor coil, which is now the condenser coil, pushes that plate down and it goes around the perimeter of this plate right here. And so it, it goes, has one, two, three, four, five, six pathways to go around it. And that happens down in the bottom of this. And so then the refrigerant just continues to travel from this way as a high pressure liquid and comes through this way and then exits out. Here you have a thermostatic expansion valve with an internal bypass right there. And in air conditioning mode, you have the high temperature, high pressure, subcooled liquid entering this way. And it goes around it through in this pin area. And then it a little bit exits right through here. And then it becomes a low pressure liquid and heads into the evaporator coil. In heating mode, you have the high pressure subcooled liquid refrigerant heading this way. And since it can't come up here, it goes up in through this and the pressure ends up pushing this upwards. And then the refrigerant exits through these holes and travels this way to the outdoor unit. Then in air conditioning mode, the high pressure, high temperature subcooled liquid comes this way and there is some refrigerant that gets right above this. And then once it does that, it's coming this way and it actually is gonna be pushing this back down again and sealing that up. And then the refrigerant comes back down this way, and then the pin only allows a small amount of refrigerant through to the evaporator. In this design, you have an external bypass, and so you can actually get to this and service this. But the thing is, you can't take this cap off while there's refrigerant in the system because refrigerant will be coming out through this hole. But anyway, what you have is this, this little plastic insert that, that would go down in there, and that seals up that section right there. And... In air conditioning mode, you have the high pressure subcooled liquid entering the TXV this way. I don't know if you can see that little hole, but the refrigerant is actually coming into this chamber and pushing up against that lip and it's sealing it. So the refrigerant can't go this way because of the high pressure pushing that down. And so it has to go internally and then only a small amount of refrigerant 
exits the TXV as a low pressure liquid. In heating mode, you have the high pressure, high temperature subcooled liquid heading this way, and it actually pushes this back. And it pushes it back enough to where it can get around it and go through that little hole and this way. So there should not be any pressure change coming through here because it's in the bypass function. So inside this little nut here, there's extra space to where this little insert can move back into the inside of here and allow space for the refrigerant to travel in front of this. Here we have an EEV, which is referred to as an electric expansion valve, and this is found in ductless mini split systems. Up at the top, we have our wire coils right here, and what you're doing is you're actually creating a magnetic field that spins, and on the inside of here, there's a needle that goes up and down. So on a ductless mini split system, you only have, on a heat pump, you only have one metering device at the outdoor unit for every individual head unit. So I'm saying that because I, I want you to understand that the metering device is at the outdoor unit and not at the indoor head unit on a ductless mini split system. So if you have multiple head units, you're going to have multiple EEVs at that outdoor unit. Here we have the inside of the EEV and you see this right here, this magnet. You have a magnetic field surrounding the stainless steel shell. And what's happening is as the magnetic field is rotating, it's going to be screwing this in and that moves the needle and it closes off the pathway down here. And it's not closing it off completely because the needle gets larger and larger as it gets pushed down and seals off more and more of the area. Likewise, it can go uh, counterclockwise when you're looking at the top of it, you unscrew it back out again. And there's also a spring here at the top so that there's, there's no way to uh, back it out too much because when it's time to close that pathway back down again, the spring presses inwards which allows this to catch onto the threads and then it can start uh, tightening down and closing off that pathway again. So this is mounted at the outdoor unit in a certain position so that it can act as the metering device for both the indoor and the outdoor coil depending on the flow of the refrigerant. So there is no bypass function on this. It's actually considered a biflow function. So that's what I wanted to discuss in reference to a bypass feature and in some cases such as the EEV, the biflow feature. If you want to learn more about preparing a system for refrigerant, checking the charge and troubleshooting, as well as the accumulator, the reversing valves, and a lot of different other scenarios we have. Here's some metering devices. We have troubleshooting airflow problems. We have troubleshooting air conditioning systems with the different scenarios. Um, we have different charging methods that you shouldn't use. We have the pump down procedure, system preparation before adding refrigerant. So all the different tools. So the recovery machine, just a lot of different information that you want to know when you're installing and servicing air conditioning and heat pump systems. So make sure to check our book out over at Amazon and also at our website at acservicetech.com. We also have a thousand question workbook along with the answer key to test your knowledge just to be able to apply what you're learning in our book. Also make sure to check out all the free resources we have over at the website at acservicetech.com such as the articles, the quick tips, the calculators, the quizzes, the podcasts, and also the Q&A. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.